We are moving into fine art. I know a lot of you in the chat rooms have been excited about this segment, and I am too. So we are moving into fine art. Once again, I'd like to introduce our critiquers. This is Bambi Cantrell and Mr. John Cornicello. So we are going to first show you all of the images that were submitted for this category. And then these two will be critiquing 20 selected images. So why don't we go ahead and get started? So roll the slideshow. All right, you guys, thank you so much for submitting all those wonderful photographs. I know that um, fine art definitely hits home with me. It's where I got my start in photography. So you guys did wonderful work. So I'm excited to hear what Bambi and John have to say about these. So you guys, I'm gonna turn it over to you, please. Man, oh, John, thanks. after this morning, you know, in the amazing pictures we saw in landscape, yeah, is... and then the fabulous images we saw in editorial and advertising, what in the world are we going to see today? I saw some really interesting things pop through there in that slideshow. Uh, surprise us now. Let's see what, what comes up I know up I'm dying to see these. <laughs> Holy cow. Wow. This is the kind of image that belongs in fine art. Mm -hmm. I love it. I think it's very interesting. And you remember all these rules we've talked about at the back of the hands, not you know, that you shouldn't show the back of the hands. Well, in an image like this, who cares? <laughs> right, it all goes away. Yeah, it sure does. John? Just the, the overlay of the, the textures, and I don't know if it's two images superimposed, um, just the masking done to bring the face forward. Everything in this is working really well for me. The jewelry, the model, the, the, the makeup. Um, I'm, the only thing I'm looking at is the style of the, the makeup and hair is kind of pin up -y compared to the rest of the image, but I don't know if anyone else would, would go to that. But. Uh, in my mind, when I look mm -hmm. at actually the hair and makeup doesn't bother me because when I look at it, I'm thinking it doesn't look as pin up -y to me as it does old fashioned. Mm -hmm. It looks like, you know, 30s or 40s kind of style. And when I look at the way the, the rest of the image is, has been treated, it kind of is in that vein mm -hmm. of something that was in the 30s, 40s, maybe even 50s. Um, so I don't really have a problem with that. Um, I find it very intriguing, and it makes me want to know the story of this image. You know, what does this really mean? And that, to me, is effective um, when you have an image that's of an illustrative nature. That, to me, makes it very, very effective. Um, so I like that very much. Um, with that said, I think probably for me, the only thing about this photograph that I find a little bit distracting, and it's hard for me to say that it's distracting because I know that we're in the illustrative category, mm -hmm. but the pots to me are a bit too symmetrical. Um, mm. You know, when I see the pots on the left-hand side of the face and those yeah. on the right, I feel as though that they compete to me with the face because um, they're a little bit too sharp and they, to me, they start uh, competing for me. The other thing that I find a little bit of a distraction with are these leaves right here, the ones that have the bigger leaves right here, mm -hmm. and the ones on this part of her arm. Um, I find them just a whisper distracting, but again, that's just a matter of personal taste, because when you are dealing with images that are of an illustrative nature, it really is, you know, whatever the, the creator makes, it's something that is very much of a personal thing. Yeah, I agree that the, the three pots on the left side, actually there's four pots there, but the three up top do draw my eye over to them. If maybe one of those was missing or two of those are missing, uh, the right side isn't so bad. I think there's just one pot and then whatever those tiles are mm -hmm. back there. It's not, not so distracting. But overall, I think it's the, the turquoise tones against the skin tones. Everything works in really nicely in this one. Um, I love yeah, this I do image. Too. This is such a hard category to critique, man. I really like this picture. Um, I find it very mysterious mm -hmm. and very moody. Again, I suggest the story, but I'm still not sure what's going on here, and it makes me want to know more about it. And I can look around through here and try to pick up clues, and it'll just take, take me a while to look through the whole image, but everything keeps me in. Yeah, John, how do you feel about the fact that, like, um, 
I mean, I love these pieces, the and I shadows. think they're really important. Mm -hmm. But how do you feel about like? Is there, do these affect that they cut through this area right here? Does that bother you? Or, you know, would it be more interesting to have something up on this platform? Or, again, this is, at a, this is all straight. Yeah, so. it's, it's personal choice. It, it wasn't really bothering me. Um, I see those, the thing that looks like Ottoman's cushions. I mean, they're probably bolsters in the, in the ground there. The one that's right next to the, the center, it seems out of place compared to the other ones. I may have tried to take that one out. Um, there's probably one on the other side, but being blocked by a body. But I think the, the bodies and the shadows, being that they aren't crisp and they have that, that motion to them, it's not bothering me so much. They are darker than that piece in the middle, whatever that is. So um, it doesn't bother me that there's, there's no one on top of that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that this is a great exercise for all of us in photography, whether you are a portrait photographer or a wedding photographer, is to give yourself a personal project and um, take images and create some sort of story that is very illustrative in nature and that's not a literal, you know, one plus mm -hmm. one is two. Not only does it really stretch you as a photographer, but it also, I think, helps you to think in an abstract way. And what happens is whenever you give yourself that personal assignment where it's, it's kind of on the quirky side, um, and it's, it, it, but it's really fun to do, what happens is you'll be photographing something that you typically do. Maybe it's a wedding. You'll be photographing a wedding. And there'll be something about that bride's veil or some sort of texture or something. And it, you'll rem remember that experience when you did that editorial or that illustrative image. And it will draw you to a new creative thought. And many people go, oh, well, I wish I was creative like Sue Bryce is, and, and I wish I was as creative, creative as John or you know whoever. And, and sometimes we get frustrated because maybe we can't think off the top of our head quickly like some of these other artists do. But that mm -hmm. doesn't come by osmosis. It's because they expose themselves to a great deal of stimuli, mental stimuli in pictures. They're not afraid to make mistakes, or maybe if they are afraid, they don't show it. That's, yeah, that's an important thing there. Uh, I know when, when Flickr first came out, everyone threw every picture they ever took on there, you know, and people would say, well, your pictures are so much better than everyone else. It's just, no, they're, my, they're best, just as bad as everyone else, but I don't put those online. Yeah, you know? there you go. <laughs> the ones they throw away, you know, I don't show you my mistakes. I mean, that's sort of the, the difference between a, a, an advanced and an amateur, not necessarily professional, but the advanced person knows what, uh, what to edit and what to throw away. Yeah, and in fact, for, for me, I never ever let a client see unedited work, ever. So if I'm shooting a wedding, if I'm doing a portrait session, they're never gonna see a picture that has not had my finger on it when it has not been retouched, absolutely never. And the reason is, is I want them to see the photographs mm -hmm. that I take, I want them to see me as perfect. And whenever you show people images, if they're unretouched, then guess what? They start equating the craft with your abilities in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't want that. I don't want them to think that way. I want them to see me as I'm perfect. And, so, and even though I'm not, but I want them to, to think that way. And so um, when it comes to illustrative imagery, this is something that is so interpretive and so personal. Um, I think that it, it, it's a great exercise in helping you mm -hmm. to develop and understand balance and a composition and color tonality. So it's a yeah, really good and exercise. And the tonality in this is just wonderful. Yeah. That, that deep turquoise, I really love that. And the tones to me work beautifully in this because they follow through on the mood. They're not, mm -hmm. they're not that bright orange or something, so they, they kind of follow through with that mysterious kind of look. This is really interesting. Yeah. This is a very interesting photograph. I have to stop and think and look at it. <laughs> I know, huh? I know. It has some of the, the strong colors that we've seen in other images, but it works here better than some of the, the other images we've seen. Um, I Personally, I'd like to see a little more room at the top and maybe come up a little from the bottom, drop the, the hole down, make it a little heavier in, in the image, and more room for the papers to fly away in the top. And the um, one thing that is bothering me in this photograph is that that dark strip through the middle, mm -hmm. Um, I feel it's so heavy right there that it kind of makes me, it's starting to pull me away from what the story is. I feel as though this artist, and I, and I think that people who work in this, they're definitely to me artists, they're mm -hmm. just working with a different tool and that's, that's a, a, a tablet and, and a Photoshop and the computer instead of a, a, a paintbrush. Um, 
but as I look at this photograph, because that back area is so dark and so heavy, it, it, I find that instead of me enjoying the entire picture, I start seeing it as two halves of the photo, uh, mm -hmm. two halves of the picture. And being right through the center, it just increases that. That's one of the reasons why I was saying if we drop everything down, you know, or, or crop up, they move lower in the frame and then give more room in the top for air. Yeah, very good. I love oh. parts of this photograph. <laughs> Yeah, the, the motion is great. Um, the the hair flowing back, the hands coming back into the the dress, uh, the knee going back, the, the the pointing of the toe. Those are all working really nicely for me. Yeah. So, what is it that when you look at this, is there anything that bothers you that you feel um, there's another way to approach it? I'm not sure about the starburst behind her. Um, I don't know, a, a little simp a simpler a simplicity in the, the upper part of the image and then maybe lightening up the bottom image so her foot isn't so lost into there. Um, just balancing the tones a little bit may help for me. What are you looking at? Um, I, I love this picture. Mm -hmm. I, there's so many things I like about yeah. it very much. I love the tonality. I love the way the light is falling across her. I love the way that, this, that she got the model to jump in this picture. It looks very graceful. What I feel is, is holding me back is that there's not enough space. I almost feel as though she's jumping out of the mm -hmm. photograph. And I want to see, I feel like the bottom half of the picture just goes so heavy and mm -hmm. dark that I, would, I think I would enjoy it. I think I would enjoy the whole experience of this image more if the, a lower camera angle was, was used so that it didn't cut through right to the center of, of her body. I, I, there's, mm -hmm. It just has so much, it makes me, the, the top part of the picture just makes me, ooh, because <laughs> I just really find it very scrumptious mm -hmm. and, very, um, and, and very illustrative. But the bottom half, to me, just kind of goes dirty and muddy. Yeah, again, the horizon's right in the middle, and the, the horizon's where your camera is. You know, try moving up and down and seeing where you can place that horizon. Uh, move, get up and move around a little bit more. Yeah, in fact, see, I don't mind the starburst. I think mm -hmm. that kind of pulls me right into the scene. I, I don't have a problem with that. If the maker is, is here with us, I'd really love to see you go, us, go this route again. I really like where you're going yeah. with this. And I think that you are steps away from something incredibly magical. Um, one other thing I'd like you to do is to work on the way that this model, is. her arms are posed. Her arms are very straight. So, you know, um, her, the bottom half of her body looks very graceful, but her arms to me look very static and a bit too stiff. So I'd love to see you work on having those, those elbows Maybe bent a little bit. Maybe if they turned out a little bit or something. So there's a little bend and a little turn to them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Question from Jaina Roller Photo. Um, this is kind of a general question, but at what point with post-processing would you say that the image is no longer a photograph? And I know that that is a difficult <laughs> question, but yeah. maybe a good time to discuss during the final. Yeah, well, that's, that's the $24 million dollar question. Yeah. What do you guys think? Do you have, do you have a... I, yeah. I, I don't have a point. I mean, if it, if it does, does look totally overprocessed, I mean, I've, I've judged many things where people just apply some random Photoshop filters, they didn't remember what they did, and it just looks like a Photoshop filter effect, and you've lost the picture. But most of the, I mean, it's all about subtlety and working it in. There's some images that may have 100 hours of Photoshop working, and you don't see it. You just, just see a beautiful image. I mean, others start without even start from a photograph. If you, you know, if you just start with a blank canvas in Photoshop, then obviously it's not a, a photograph. But I, I don't know if if that's an, anything that we can really answer. Yeah, I don't know that we can answer that either. But, but I will say that if you notice the treatment, mm -hmm. if the, your first impression is the treatment and not the experience, yes. then to me that, that tells me that then the treatment is overdone. Um, one of my favorite photographers, I think is a good example of using a variety of images, is Jennifer Hudson. Mm -hmm. I am nuts about her style Be and because she knows how to take elements in a variety of different kinds of elements, put them together in a single image to create a composite that is believable, that looks photographic, but it looks beyond photographic. It, it is very much um, fine art and very much um, illustrative imagery. And I think that that's kind of the key, uh, is, to, is, when, is when the overall feeling of the mm -hmm. photograph has that oh, jaw-dropping appeal to you, 
then it has been done correctly. And if you notice, or what if you take someone like Jerry Yulesman, who's been doing this for 50 years, maybe you know, way before computers and and Photoshop. I mean, they're they're photographs. I mean, there's a lot of darkroom work. There's sandwiching th things. There's dodging and burning and combining out elements from different images and all. But it's, so it's it's not new to the to the digital world. I mean, there's people have been doing really wonderful work for a long time. That's a really good point. I love, he's one of my favorites, too. Mm -hmm. And of course, now I have ignited an incredible conversation. <laughs> I bet you have. Yeah, I bet you have. That's going to create controversy it for is. sure. What it makes the photograph? Has. But it'll take the heat off of us as they all yeah. talk that. Well, you know, room. I really understand that controversy, though, because, mm -hmm. uh, and to me, part of the controversy that happens is that if you, as the maker, as the photographer, if you're the one who are, that is applying the photographic treatments, like Jennifer Hudson does, to me, then, it is beautiful artistry that mm -hmm. is of a photographic nature, and it's fabulous. But then, the other side of the coin is somebody who basically takes a crappy picture, sure. sends mm -hmm. it to a digital artist to have them clean it up and make it um, a beautiful image. Then, is that your work or is that somebody else's? Well, I quite honestly, I, I think that is, I think you're plagiarizing on somebody else's artistry. And, you know, but you, even if you do the Photoshop work yourself, you know, if you start out with a with a crappy image and just do a lot of work on it, and just all you see is the work, the image is gone. You know, if it starts with a good image, you can do a lot of post production work, and it still stays a good image. But if you start with a bad one, then you just notice the the work that was done, and who cares about the image? That's true. So this one starts with a great image and yep. works its way through, and as does this one. I, I'm nuts about this picture. I'll tell you right now, I am absolutely in love with this photograph. I think it's just lovely, it's amazing, it's interesting. Um, there's so many things I like about it. Um, I love the expression on the young lady's mm -hmm. face, and it's not to me technically, you know, from just a strictly photographic way, it's not necessarily technically perfect, but it reminds me uh, of, of an artist. I can't remember mm -hmm. what his name is. Um, huh? Good stuff, Clint. That's exactly who it reminds <laughs> me of, Clint. And I, because of that, I, you just gave me goosebumps. <laughs> and um, I, so I think this is just magnificent. I think the maker did a really nice yeah, job. Yeah, I'm tying this one back to an image in earlier today of the woman in the cream-colored leather vest, where we said that the, the background was just too harsh, the bark of the tree, where it's, this here is, it still looks like a tree behind her or something, or she's laying on the grass, but it's been pulled back or textured over so that it doesn't compete with her. She just fits right into the whole image here. Huh. Really nicely done. Yeah, it's beautifully framed. And you know, the, the great thing about these kinds of photographs is that this is a portrait, sort of. But the great thing about it is that when a client, when somebody comes to you as an artist, as a photographer, and they see images like this, they don't look at you as a photographer anymore. They look at you as an artist. And when you are an artist, you have arrived. And that means that people will pay a heck of a lot more money mm -hmm. to retain you and your services than they were, uh, well, other John Q. Public. So um, I applaud this maker yeah. brilliantly for creating mm -hmm. something so tasteful and harmonious, and, and, I, and under normal circumstances, I wouldn't like the texture, because it's on her arms and everything, but I, what I like is that she was, wh whoever made this image was very masterful, and they, they kind of kept it off the face a bit. It's not, it mm -hmm. doesn't make the skin on the face look mottled oh. and kind of mm -hmm. icky, and it was done in such a way that now it's got beautiful harmony throughout the entire image. This was a great category. Can I just say for the record, mm -hmm. this is all eye candy. <laughs> it's really beautiful to look at. Yeah, the, the colors in this, the purples to the yellows to the oranges, the blues, everything comes together really well in here. The, the, the horse has got so good separation from everything around it. Um, it's in a, a nice spot in the frame. I don't know that we need so much foreground, but it, 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 it still works. I mean, I could see making a nice wall print of this. Yeah, this is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And there are a number of things I personally like about this picture. The first thing I, well, I love the fact that there's this cute little pony right there. Mm -hmm. But I love how this piece right here, here frames, and this piece frames that entity. And so you have this wonderful vortex right here uh, that, that leads you right to that beautiful little pony. And I also like the fact that, the, that if, this, if this horse wasn't really here and the maker put that horse there, they did a really good job <laughs> because it looks... It looks like it's supposed to be there. It looks like it's there, mm -hmm. even down to the um, the shadow where the little hooves are. So it's it's quite nicely done. Yeah, I too don't know that that all of this bottom area is essential.
but it's so beautiful all the way around and treated, it's just so clean and so simple um, that I think it's really quite nicely done. The other thing I love is I love that this line right here with these, um, the light fixtures that lead you right to that pony. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, the leading lines work really nicely yeah. on this. I mean, that would make a beautiful piece of fine art for your home, you know, or for a gallery. Um, you know, and just talking about that, there are some amazing things that you can do with images like this. Um, let me give you some ideas just in a general, general way. Um, we, I, I participate in at least 30 or 40 auctions a year, easy. Um, elementary school auctions, uh, junior high school auctions, and then senior high school auctions. I love auctions. It's a great part of our business. But even images like this could do very well in an auction um, for, uh, for large galas where they have um, you know, um, um, you know, like black and white balls, things of that nature, where they're trying to raise money for lots of different charities. Um, this would be a fantastic kind of image to to put in a ga in, in that kind of an auction um, because it's going to really elevate you as an artist. I got showing up at a bank or someplace that um, you know that caters to that kind of thing. It's just gorgeous. Yes, yes Patty. Okay, if you're going to do that. Um, how do you submit it to something like that? And the question I mean is, do you mount it? Do you frame it? What is the best way to submit to an auction, to have your image um, displayed? I think it depends on the auction and depends on the kind of thing you're doing. If you're doing a live auction, then I would want to see a completed picture. I would want to see a completed piece. In other words, I would want it framed. I'd want it hand signed. Um, I would want it to be a completely finished piece of artwork so that you know that, that it would showcase well. When I do an auction, I like to show up at the auction. I want to be there. I want people to see me as the artist. I want to say have them meet me and for us to be able to communicate one on one because I know if they if we meet, I got them. And it's also see only a certain number of people will one person will win the bid on an auction piece that you do, but that doesn't mean that that's the only person okay. that you impact. You can impact hundreds of people. But again, I go back to the fact that you never get a second chance to make a first impression. So whatever you're doing, even if you're gonna donate a small print, let's maybe say it's an eight by eight print, and it doesn't even have to be a big print. Maybe it's a, a three by three print on a, an 11 by 14 mount board. Maybe it's a little tiny picture um, on an 11 by 14 double mat, an eight ply mat. Oh yeah, that would look amazing. So it can look very beautiful and it's a great way to um, submit it with a certificate of authenticity. Mm -hmm. um, I told you a little earlier, I was telling you about um, using an embosser. By the way, if you go to BambiCantrell.net and go to my blog, you'll see, some, you'll see examples of what I'm talking about with my blind embosser and also the line of greeting cards that I did. So images like this would be great. So make sure that you send a certificate of authenticity with it and then emboss it, you know, have a blind embosser so that it mm -hmm. looks very official and elegant. Yes? Do you sign everything that you donate? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. In fact, we, um, for every portrait that we do in our studio, we mount every single print that goes out of our studio on eight ply, acid free, um, eight by, oh, excuse me, 11 by 14 mats. Um, they're hinged. We buy our mats from Ready Mat, mm -hmm. and so they're hinged mats so that they're glued on one end. We can slide the photograph in and mount it, and then um, the mat lays over, and it's an eight ply mat, so it's a really high quality mat. And then I hand sign those prints because I charge a lot for a small for a print. My eight by tens and my four by sixes are the same price because it's what's on the paper that counts. It's not the paper. That's not what you're paying mm -hmm. for. So because of that, I want them to see that what they're going to get is not something that they can buy at Costco. I'm sick to death of people asking me for them stupid digital files. So we don't sell digital files. A digital file comes with every print that you get. So that they, you know, if they want that digital file, they're gonna pay a nice premium for it because, you know, mm -hmm. I, I make a living creating images and creating, you know, uh, photographs for people. Okay. Yeah, this, now this image is very interesting. Uh, first, it looks like it's probably upside down because of this ripply reflection at the top, but then if we turn it upside down, she'd be standing on her head. So how is this done? I mean, it, it, that's the first thing that hits me is the technical side of things. But even as an artistic side, I'm, I'm drawn into it. The, why is she out there? What's going on? And what, what are those ripples up there? What is, what's, what's causing that reflection? Yeah. This photograph I want to love, but I find the reflection a distraction. In just a personal opinion, mm -hmm. the, the upper part of the photograph to me, because she's looking in the camera, she, this is an example to me of where it's, it's pulled us back into reality. Mm -hmm. 
And I don't really know why, because the other girl that we saw laying in the, the little flowers that was looking in the camera was looking in the camera, and yet we were all over that. But I, and I love the bottom half of this photograph so much that I find that heavy white piece on top of her, I feel like it competes, and it, it mm -hmm. doesn't, I, I can't seem to get past that. Yeah, the lower half of the image stands on its own. It's so beautiful. Yeah. I mean, daggummit, that is really pretty. I mean, I love the composition of this piece down here. And even if it were just this piece up here, mm -hmm. you know, I think this right here, I love the watercolory kind of the feel of it. It's just scrumptious. And this right here, the, the composition and the way mm -hmm. they posed it, I mean, look at that. It's just, this just works beautifully with the flowers and such. But I feel that it's too much of a good thing. Beautiful image. Yeah. I just want to know where she did this, or he did this. This is gorgeous.